We're in the cemetery, and it's stupid dark out. There are three tires and a bike that I might not be familiar with riding, and I've got to try and get as many tires as I can over the obelisk of a tombstone that may or may not be lit up with a bike light. Who has a bike I can borrow? Video portraits of American trendsetters. 10 cities across the country, five episodes in each city. This week, a late night freak bike riding experience with Jake Ryder. So what are you gonna be working on today? Well, I started a, uh, a new project, uh, it's a drift trike. Something I can take down the West Hills over here in Portland. So it's uh, kind of like an adult big wheel tricycle. Hmm. Okay, should I be aware of any flying pieces of metal or anything? Yes, absolutely. Okay. You got glasses on, that's yeah. good. I'm gonna stand over here. When I'm making a piece, I don't always make something because it's something I want to ride around all the time. I'll make a bike just because I want to see how it looks. This is kind of the framework we got going on down here. Uh, wheel's gonna go on either side. Bicycles are their own art form. The lines of a bike are really classic, um, timeless lines, and what people can do to change those and, and express their own abilities, I think is really, really cool. All this is super exciting because I just recently got health insurance again, so. Do you injure yourself often in the shop? Uh, not in the shop, but out riding bikes. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's like a rideable art form. It's something that's like uniquely you. It, it might be uncomfortable or stupid or dangerous, but having something like that is the fun of it. It looks like it's gonna work to me, man. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. What makes a freak bike a freak bike? Uh, usually it's, it's taking an existing bike that was engineered and designed and tearing it apart and making something totally different out of it. Practicality very rarely plays into freak bikes. Uh, and I don't think that it should. I was given like two completely different bikes and like you're trying to get them to somehow cruise side by side so it yeah. doesn't feel weird. Uh, so it's a little kid's bike frame, 16 inch frame. It's like a $700 wheel set on this freak bike. The pedaling's a little weird because your legs are up high and your knees are kind of in your chest, but it cruises. The first idea was to have like something we could pull and it would sprout training wheels from the side. It was horrifying. It was the worst ride. I've never been on a more terrifying bike ever. It was just a death machine. Oh my God. And so we pulled it out and it rode like a dream. Uh, so this one's my sound system bike. I think it's kind of the epitome of like a freak bike. It kind of keeps everything upbeat and happy. Mm -hmm. It keeps everything upbeat and happy for the pedestrians on the street. It's a workout to push it around, but it's kind of a labor of love. Just a mile, just a mile down the road, down the road and the street or two away. Tell me more about the, uh, the various bicycle communities in Portland. Uh, definitely people, families that use bikes as part of everyday life. Um, there's the cyclocross crowd, it's a real heavy commuter crowd, and then beyond that you kind of get into the weird fringe stuff. You get some of the freak bike groups. Uh, there's Zubom, North Freak is another freak bike group. Chunk, Dropouts, uh, there's the Dead Babies which has a Portland chapter. My name's Pavo. Pavo, nice yeah. to meet you, Arizona Dave. Tell me more about Dead Baby. Every say, bike is somebody's baby, right? Okay, gotcha. So you get a bike and it's, it's like, oh, it's your baby. It's yeah. brand new, it's like you ginger it, and then you become a teenager and you're like, ah, cars. And you're like, we find these things in like ditches and junk, and like. At some scrap. point, that bike is somebody's baby. baby. Yeah. Somebody's Frankenstein it back together dead. with a welding torch. That's a dead baby. <laughs> social aspect of bikes is why all of the big group rides come around because everyone really wants to get together and show off their bikes and see all of their good friends. 
It's liberating. It's you're out. You're experiencing the elements. You're experiencing the city, the sounds, the smells. And it's a totally different perspective on riding a bike around the city. It's a viewpoint that you never get on a bicycle. This is a very interesting uh, riding experience, to say the least. Definitely gotta be wary of uh, your turning radius. There's a little bit of a learning curve. Yeah. Any freak bike you ride, you know, you gotta yeah. hop on it, try it out. Yeah. People on the streets get really stoked. Uh, it's really an engaging way to ride around a city. And it kind of becomes this awesome way, like bikes are the vessel towards, towards having fun with other people. People can just totally be themselves or even take on alter egos and personas for different bike events. And so people can definitely go totally crazy and have a crazy time and like the next day you're seeing pictures online of somebody's like face all fucked up because they took a peeler on the way home. Oh, 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 oh. It doesn't have to be practical, it doesn't have to be uh, a race bike, you don't have to commute on it, you can just enjoy riding a bike. I mean, little kids do it all the time. There's no reason that everyone else can't still, too. Are you testing these designs? Or do you have some concept beforehand? How do you know that you're not going to make this bike and it's just going to fucking collapse? Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> Sometimes it comes to me in my sleep. Sometimes. I'll get inspiration from friends, like I'll see somebody's sweet bike that's rolling around town and I'll like one little part of it that they've done and then maybe I'll see another bike and I like some parts of that. Usually I'll totally build a bike in my head a month, two months before I actually put it together and, and most of the assemblies are already kind of like done up here and then it all comes together and I like knowing that it's, you know, uh, my style and, and sort of my aesthetic and they know that it's going to be my type of ride and that nobody else is going to build something quite like it. So tell me, I want to know where you fit in to Portland's bicycle communities. I, I just like, I don't know, kind of a go-between. I've always just done my own thing. Kill your lights. Maybe I'm just like a spectator, sort of. <laughs> what I really like about all the bike communities is an uh, amazing sense of expression, self-expression, and independence. Oh, I've never associated with one particular group. Um, that's what I like. like. I don't want to tie myself down and limit myself to just one particular type because I want to hang out with everybody. Oh, fuck my life. Next time on American Hipster Presents, exotic donuts, a wedding, and my first karaoke experience with Voodoo Donut.